All right, Havana. Let's talk about Havana defense first. So Havana defense is really just two decisions that you have to make. One, are you spawn camping? And two, uh, like where do you want to set up your off angles? So Havana spawn camping is generally generally good if you have a Lucio rush comp that doesn't really benefit a lot from off angle. So like let's say we're playing Reaper May. We would benefit from playing on this corner over here. Yes, of course, right? That's This is a good corner here, right? But the benefit isn't that good. You don't really like the long range sight lines. There's not a great May wall here. There's not any great short sight lines for your Reaper or your Junkrat and so on. So what, what's, what's the real value out of playing this corner here? Just giving them free cart push. Why not instead go to spawn and hold them at spawn where you actually have good short sight lines. Yes, they have a massive, massive respawn advantage, but you also have a very easy recontest. And if you got Lucio's speed, you could probably take the second fight here. And then you might even get a third fight, right? So if you want to spawn camp in Havana, it's totally fine. If you have heroes that don't benefit from really, really long sight lines, there's no real point not spawn camping. It's good to do. So I highly recommend that. Uh, and then the way you'd set up the spawn camp would essentially be try and stuff this choke. Just be obviously aware that this is the flank that the first flank that they're going to try and leverage out on you. And that this is the most lethal flank. So you need to be aware of this flank right here. Uh, and then also that there's obviously another door out here. This is actually one of the better ones because smart teams, when you're getting spawn camp, will come out this door and they'll swing wide this way and get like different angles here and then different angles here. Not a lot you can do about that. But yeah, don't let cart move. Players, supports, and squishies near cover. Uh, you know, utilize this gas station, utilize this car, and be aware of this flank behind. So that's what I recommend for spawn camping. Okay. If you're not spawn camping or if you're recontesting, this corner is really, really quite good because obviously to cross this line, they walk into LOS of your team. And for attackers, there's not really a lot of good DPS positions until we turn this corner. So you can kind of stuff them their DPS way back in Narnia over here, which isn't that great. Um, for defense, you need to be aware that this is another off angle that attackers might use. I don't really recommend this off angle for defenders unless you're playing like a, a Tracer or something or a Genji, because if you're over here and your team has to back up, you're stuck. So generally you'd use this as a flanker, but attackers can utilize this coming in from this door through here and they will come in through here. So they'll wrap around from here. And then also some attackers will flank around from this way, from this frame here, and they'll peek out. Like you might have a soldier here, a damage boosted Ash, a Widowmaker, Hanzo, things like that. And then the real danger comes when they can push cart up to here and they can rotate around and take this high ground. So for defenders, you need to be very careful of that. Um, the, one of the difficult, most difficult things with Havana is deciding how long or if you want to hold high ground. Now, the problem with high ground is that you can't really stay here forever. Back in the double shield meta, you could stand up here and do multiple cooldown cycles with your Orisa, with your Sigma, and so on, and just spam fire on them over and over and over and over again. But in Overwatch 2, you just there isn't enough shield HP to do that, and it's just not that good. Uh, so what I recommend is if you have people that can utilize high ground, definitely utilize high ground here at the start. Get some full information here, um, and, and so on. But the problem with high ground is not necessarily with the high ground itself, but with the fact that Hanzo and Widowmaker and even Ash to an extent are very common hero picks. So if the attackers have a Widowmaker back here, this just straight up removes high ground being a realistic option to hold for very long. Because she can sit here and anytime anybody peeks from high ground, you lose. And you can't do anything about it. She's too far away. Do you kind of see what I'm saying? So the weakness of high ground is not really the high ground itself. It's the fact that the high ground is exposed to a really nasty sniper angle, and there's not a lot that you can do about it. Now, if you were also a Widowmaker, you could play the duel here and be cute, be sneaky, and control the space. But just something to be aware of. Now, here's the question. What if they're not on snipers? What if they're on maybe an a, a soldier even, right? Uh, Cassie, McC McCree, uh, 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 Tracer, Reaper, May, Torb, anything like that. There's nothing that can really snipe you as much. So you could be a lot more comfortable taking this high ground and just spamming it from here. So that's something to keep in mind. This high ground is really good as long as you're not at a risk of getting your head blown off. So this, it's good for DPS, it's good for supports, it's good for even a tank here, right? Like a Sigma has a good off angle. So if there are no snipers to contest the sightline, I do recommend tank and hold corner. Somebody can hold corner to contest cart to get a separate off angle, but then having your DPS or at least some of your DPS and your supports up here to, to kind of have a, a, a nasty little crossfire here. And what your tank might need is like maybe 
you have a support sitting here like an Ana or something to support your tank and to kind of watch this door here because you got to watch out for this door. So yeah, anyway, long story short, optimally you set up that crosshair. If they do have snipers, it doesn't mean that you can't hold high ground at all. It just might mean that you have to be really sneaky about it. Like maybe you let them push cart, maybe their DPS walk up and then you late flank. Like one of the best things you could do in Havana is late flank. So what I mean by that is like, let's say you the cart's pushed up and then you as a Cassidy crouch, 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 crouch. And then peek out here, you'll catch their Widow off guard. You'll catch their backline off guard. You can get a lot of picks from here. So something to kind of keep in mind. And obviously if you're playing Tracer, Sombra, Genji, any sort of like flanker, wrecking ball, Winston, right? This is what you're going to want to be leveraging, using this high ground to get onto squishies uh, once you kind of baited them in, okay? And then if they're on Widowmaker, uh, you know, and, and you don't want to peek the Widow because you can't go top, this sight line's okay. You can utilize this sight line like here. It's not great, but at least it's a little bit tighter. You do need to be careful that Widows will sometimes play in the arches and or grapple up top. So optimally, you want to kind of play around this building here and take angles in the tank. The other thing too is if they push cart up to like here, right? Their Widow doesn't have sight line on cart. So you could sit here as like a cast, for example, and, and just spam the butt cheeks out of cart from here and their Widow can't do anything about it. Like you could burn their tank alive because his widow's like standing back here. So you can actually just abuse the fact that the widow has only long sight lines. Maybe the widow's here, right? But you can't see any squishies, right? She can only see whoever's touching cart and you could just burn cart like crazy. Um, yeah, just the one VOD review assimilator, sorry. Um, and then from here, there are like high grounds that you can use up here. Um, if you're playing like Widow Hanzo, you could be cute with that. This is fine. Anything that's like a long cheeky sight line here is, is pretty cool as well. Um, but most DPS hero slash supports, especially if the enemy team is on a sniper, is going to be leaning towards the left side of the map because it's slightly shorter sight lines. You can watch how the sight lines open up as I swing out wide. You see, like, I'm, now I'm exposed to that arch. I'm exposed to that high ground. I'm exposed to these little lanes through the, the arches like that. Um, so try and leverage that. If you want to play a support or DPS, you could do a lot of late flanks like I was saying earlier. Uh, sometimes as snipers it's good to set up in these these positions like up here this is another good widow spot back here good good angle here uh, and if you want to be really cheeky to win the widow duel peeking here is also a really good one to do uh, but yeah definitely leverage these high grounds late but these high grounds early are not good if the enemy team is on snipers if they're not this high ground continues to be good from the start all the way to the end of first point for recontesting first point so this happens pretty frequently people always want to talk about how to touch and recontest uh havana um yeah that's fine schmooze yeah i don't, I don't mind go ahead uh or shum sh yeah schmooze yeah that's fine uh so then basically what you want to try and do is try and not recontest all in the same spot and this is i think a very consistent issue with people on second point as well uh you don't want to recontest Havana on one side. And the reason why that is, is because generally most teams will be set up to punish this position here. So you'll have like DPS back there. You have maybe a sniper up here. You'll have backline will be over here, somebody on cart. And they're all just focused on blowing up that one spot. Yeah, no problem. And so what you want to try and do is if you have anybody that's mobile, like Soldier Tracer, even Genji, even like a sniper, right, with a pocket, uh, uh, just try and take it, take send like one person out here to cause a bit of distraction. Because remember, most of their attention is going to be on this choke. So if you can make them even just a little bit uneasy and split the resources, this spot really isn't that bad for a lot of heroes. If you're a Tracer, you can blink through to here and get good pressure from this angle here. If you're a Hanzo or a Widowmaker, this is actually a this is the better sightline than actually rolling out left. Same thing as a damage boosted soldier. Uh, so maybe your tank has to go to cart. Maybe some of your supports have to go to cart to help support uh, this position, by the way, for supports. Really, really good. Definitely leverage this part of the map. But for your DPS, you don't want to all be rolling out in the same side. You want to try and take it off angle, cause chaos, cause attention. You have easier access to backline from here. You're going to do your tanks and your supports a huge favor. And as well as if there's any enemies over here, you'll clear them out for your team. Um, does that apply for every map and recontest? Yes. Whenever you can, try not recontest from one single choke because it's a bit like the 2CP experience where you're all walking out of the same choke. It's not going to be good. This isn't the worst choke in the world, of course, but I generally try and avoid splitting your resources whenever you can. And it depends on your comp, of course. Like if you're running Reaper May, Moira Lucio, Ryan, probably not going to split your resources but even then you might actually have your reaper roll out this side here geez sorry guys broke a finger kind of hard and your reaper might tp up top and then try and like pressure or drop from on the back line from there and that would still be a good way to be like sneaky and split resources okay so that's defense for the most part a little bit complicated but those are some good general guidelines for the map okay so for attack 
First thing first, spawn camp. How do you break spawn camp? Like I said, it's essentially just set up off angles and flanks and just try and three, two, one. The only other tip that I can say is definitely spawn camping rewards a higher risk, higher rewards uh, play style for the person trying to break the spawn camp because it's less punishing for you to die than it is for the enemy team. So for example, if I'm Genji and I just dive in and I kill their Zen and I die for it, they're going to have to back up because my respawn is instant. Their respawn is like, what, double, triple as bad? Um, not to mention how slow a Zenyatta is. So like you could go for these like super high risk, high reward plays. There are certain heroes that are better at that. Um, like a pharmacy can oftentimes just straight up fly out in the sky. Not a good hero in general, but she can blow up a spawn camp instantly. Um, another one would be like a tracer just goes and assassinates. You could have like a Reinhardt just pins into the back line and dies for it, but it gets a kill. Yeah, Bastion is actually a really great spawn camping hero. So you have like your tank goes in aggressively and you late peek here with a Bastion in turret form. Generally, you're going to get a kill with that. So just to get a kill. Um, and don't remember you have your 25% respawn swap. So if you go to a spawn camp breaking hero like Bastion, but you don't want to play Bastion the rest of the map, not the end of the world. You go back to spawn, maybe you lose a tiny bit of ult charge, but it's just been one fight, so you go right back out there. Uh, but yeah, highly recommend using that. I think also, like I said, going up this direction, this door here, and try to swing this side. If you have the mobility to do it, this is also a great way to break up spawn camps and really cause a lot of chaos. Because remember, you can set up, if you can get that control, you can get control of like uh, so many angles here. Okay, besides that, uh, assume that they're on Widowmaker on rollout. Just assume that they're on Widowmaker and that Widowmaker is peaking high ground. You know, worst case scenario, you could just push cart and you don't peak until the, the cart's still about here anyway. And then you'll know for sure whether they're on Widowmaker. So just assume it. And then the, you're going to need to do a little, a couple of things. You need to find out, are they on high ground? If so, who's on high ground? Who's, where, are they holding this corner here? And the last thing you need to do your homework on is you really need to clear out this area of the map here too. Um, you don't need to clear it out necessarily if you see all five members of the enemy team. But I assume that they've got a Torm up here. Assume that they've got a Tracer up here. Assume that there's a Sombra in your backline. Assume that there's like a Genji hiding up here, right? Or, or a Doomfist, right? Or a Wrecking Ball. You, more often than not, um, there's, there's going to be somebody hiding in this area of the map. And you just want to make sure that they're not there. If you see five members of the enemy team, okay. Just keep in mind that people often will try and hide in this side of the map. So just clear that one up. And then when you've done that, as the cart's moving, I actually recommend people trying to control and swing out this side of the map more than I do the left side. I think a lot of people tend to get caught up fighting in here, but if the defenders are smart, this area of the map is pretty rough. Like they could put a lot of spam damage in here without actually committing in here. So just be very careful about this rotation in here. Uh, so that being said, you can set up little flanks in here. Like you could, you could theoretically peek here as Hanzo and catch the backline off guard. But a lot of that just depends on where their supports are playing, where their DPS are playing. Like if there's Zenyatta's like right here, yeah, sure. But most people won't do that. So just keep in mind, this is something good to use for attackers, but it's only good to use in certain circumstances. Okay. So anyway, long story short, you get cart moving. Maybe you clear out a little bit left. You definitely clear out right. You can utilize this angle here. You can, if you're a soldier, uh, you could like set up an angle here once cart's pushed up. And then the other thing about this position here, it's just really important for attackers, is that you actually have a really clear sight line to the high ground from here. So it's much easier for you to get to the high ground from here than it is from main. Obviously because you're further away, but also there's a reason this car is here. There's a reason this light post is here, right? It provides cover, so you're able to make this rotate as a flanker, as a sniper, or whatever, either directly to this high ground with like a grapple or something, or just to walk through, run up the stairs, and then you take the high ground. Um, gee willikers, one of these days, there you go. So we, we go up the top here and there you go. So and then from here, you could take this high ground position and spam down, or if you're feeling super cheeky, maybe the cart's pushed up a little bit further, your tank's in, you can utilize this here. Easy angle here, very aggressive. Or if you're feeling super duper cheeky, come on now. You got this angle as well. This one's much, much higher risk, and I don't think it's actually worth the risk 99% of the time unless you're like a tracer sneaking around to backline, but this is a good one to use. Okay, so once card gets to here, remember what I said about defense. Recontest high ground flanks. They will use them most of the time, depending on the DPS here. People will try to sneak up behind it and catch you off guard. Roadhogs, Doomfists, Tracers, even Widows, right? They'll sneak up behind you. So just be aware. If you don't see people on your screen here, they might be either tucking in up to catch your flank or they might be back here. This one you don't care about. This one you do. Okay. From here, we've got a couple of options. Most people are going to kind of lean to right side, but just be aware that leaves you vulnerable to this. So you might want to get control of this. But generally, high ground is not as good for attackers once the cart's pushed up to about here, because even if you do get the high ground, your vision isn't as good. 
right? So what you would try and do is be aware of people that are taking that, maybe take it yourself, but then later on, you might start to take your angles from here, from underneath, and even sometimes you can swing wide to here as well. Like I actually think this is a pretty underrated position for a lot of people. And if you wanna get super, super cheeky, uh, come on now, we can also do things like this. So again, cart's moving, but don't just all turtle on cart. Be aware of what the enemy team might do to you. Be aware of what you could do to them and try and set up angles and flanks. A lot of the stuff that we talk about comes back to angles and flanks, angles and flanks, okay? So last thing, as we said, Cap the cart, don't stack people on cart generally. People generally will try and die of the recontest. Take good angles, get ready to stuff this choke. Remember the recontest from here, and don't forget that people can recontest from here, although it's a little bit less likely, okay? So, let's continue with attack here. Um, actually, give me one second, I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna blow my nose one second. Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, just finding a cold. Okay, anyway, long story short. So we push up cart here. Let's continue with attack here. So attack, all about getting cart moving early and often. And then from here, there's a couple of different options here. The first one, the obvious one, is rotating out through left side and then starting to slowly control the stairs up from this angle right through here. You see this all the time. And then from here, you can even continue to swing wide and control the left side map. This one is good. This one is really, really good. It's, 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 it's easy, it's, it's lazy, but it's also, it just works. It's generally the safer position to rotate to because most of the time, if the enemies are playing this back corner area here, they don't really have good angles to contest this position here. So it often works. Um, playing Widow, Hansa, Soldier, Ash, whatever, Echo, you can get people up all up in here. It, it's good. This area of the map for, uh, for, for, for attackers is really, really powerful. However, there's a couple of areas that you need to be aware of. Um, this is a good flank, a good hard flank that you can utilize. You can get like short sight lines and sneak up on here. You can also do more greedy flanks to catch backliners from here. Um, you can theoretically set up an off angle on their tank from this position as well, and you have the mega that gives you a lot of help as well. Um, this is okay. Uh, just keep in mind that generally defenders, because they have this position back here, can support these railings areas really, really good, at least up until the boilers or whatever these things are. From this position on, I think it's attacker favored. So for you, generally, push cart, control this space at the high ground as best as you can. If your tank or whoever's pushing cart only has to worry about these high grounds right here, he's gonna kiss you right in the mouth. Um, if your tank is getting doing about this, but also is getting crossfire from here and from above, he's not gonna kiss you in the mouth. So you need to be aware of that. The last thing we're gonna talk about, we'll talk more in detail on defense, is this position here. Um, this is really not that good for attackers. You can, as a Widow, Reaper, Genji, whatever, take this from spawn and clear this out. Um, but it's not generally the best angle in the world. It's okay for certain heroes, for certain, um, but generally as the fight evolves, you'll have to move from here. Also, these positions, somewhat underrated. Uh, I think everybody knows these positions, but I, I don't, they're not generally consistent. So I like left side swinging. Um, and then obviously there is for flankers, Tracer, Sombra, whatever, Wrecking Ball, there is this flank which gives you quick access out to backline sneakily um, and much more sneaky than this one here. And it also gets you a little bit closer. So um, uh, from there, just push cart, clear off their high grounds. You know, ultimately you're gonna be fighting for the high ground at some point. Uh, whatever team has better ult usage, better mechanics, better angle control, you're gonna eventually gonna be able to, once the cart gets to about here, uh, you'll probably be able to clear off this side of the map as well. And then it gets to be where it's all about controlling the space and trying to stuff them in this choke here while you're moving cart. You'll also notice that a lot of the times it's good to control this angle as well. So generally for attackers, you might be spread a little bit thin. I would say priority is actually in controlling this side of the map still for late second than this side, because I think this is just not as good of a position for LOS on cart, right? And it's also higher risk because it's closer to the enemy spawn area where you're gonna have to worry about respawns just immediately creeping up on you. So this is a good position to hold if you can, but I actually like better when backline plays here. I think you have better cover, better LOS, and I believe, yeah, these boxes are indestructible as well. So it's not like, oh, it's a destructible cover, it is indestructible. So you can sit right here and deal with cart, 
And really when you're in this position, there are no surprises. There's your respawn door right there. There's your respawn door over there. If they try and creep up to you, they gotta walk upstairs. You've got good cover, you can shoot cart, you can help off angles. I really like backliner positions here. Um, and then if you wanna be cheeky, you can have uh, a separate off angle here. But I, I really like, if you just have somebody on cart and you control the space, more often than not, that's gonna be good enough to cap in most circumstances. So uh, this is just too risky for me. I see too many times Genji's coming out of spawn, Reaper's coming out of spawn, Hanzo soldiers coming out of spawn, Roadhog's coming out of spawn, and just catching people right here off guard, and then you end up dying. Um, um, one other thing to keep in mind as well, like I said, is that this flank does wrap around behind. So occasionally you might have flankers that will wrap all the way behind and try and catch you off guard. So just keep that in mind. Uh, and then obviously you might have like a Widowmaker peeking out here late second. So get pressure on cart, get control of an angle. That's pretty much Havana in a nutshell is, is not spreading yourself super, super thin, but keeping cart pressure and controlling high ground in some way, shape or form constantly. You should never have people all sitting on cart. It's just suicide with this much high ground off angle control. Okay, so for defense, a little bit more uh, complex because you got a lot of positions that are pretty decent. So first off, if you are a short range hero or a hero with mobility, this position is busted. I was playing this the other day as May in a ranked game versus a composition with some snipers and I was just making their lives miserable. They could take no space because I was up here with like uh, an on a pocket or a bat pocket from across here. And any time that they try to take an off angle or take space, I was on them. I was constantly on them. Because the nice thing about this position is it's not just that you have, oh, good sight lines on cart, right? You also can shoot them from behind. You can flank them. You can also, ooh, do this. I was doing this. I can't move very easily. You could do this. This is a great way of accessing this far right flank and from shooting from behind here. You are a monster to deal with from this position if you are a flanker or you have some form of like short range like a Reaper May, Genji Tracer, Sombra, uh, Doomfist Wrecking Ball, Winston can stay here easily, Diva can stay here easily, heck a Junkrat could be a nuisance from here. This is a really, really underused or under underrated position and it's only gotten better in Overwatch 2. I'm not sure what they've done with it. I think they've expanded the room a little bit, maybe expanded some of the different things. So it's a huge, huge, huge power spot. Defense as well, I, you can definitely hold this side of the angle here if you're like a flanker. Um, but this is a little bit, like I said, it's a little bit easier for attackers to walk up because for defenders, here's the problem with defenders going here. For defenders going here, you need support, right? So where's your support coming from? The opposite high ground usually. Well, why don't this, why doesn't the defender support play here instead? Well, the problem with the position here, yes, yeah, Ivana map guide, is that if I'm a defender support playing here, I can't see or shoot cart. So if, if I have my backline playing here on defense, basically attackers just guarantee push the cart all the way to here without being contested. Um, it's too easy. So what I would do is, if you're going to leverage this, you, even if your supports are with you, you definitely need to push aggressively to stop cart early, or you might be like a tracer or something that doesn't demand a lot of support. So this is a good part of the map to control. Just keep in mind that generally attackers have a slightly better positions to contest this space. So what you'll often see is that see supports playing up along here, or up in this door frame here with this like good cover, and trying to help your team as a result. Now, this is okay. Um, but the only weakness of this is that you can get a little bit crossfired. So this angle here, let's say you don't have anybody up in here, attackers can peek you from here. Attackers can also peek you from railing here. And if they take a hard flank, attackers can peek you from here as well. So uh, really, as long as you're aware of where the, your threats are, like if, if they have Widow, where's Widow? If they have Tracer, where's Tracer? If they have Winston, where's Winston, right? Then you should be okay. Um, because nothing on the floor can really touch you, but you do can get shot from multiple angles. So definitely play your cover, whether that's the brick wall here or even just the floor, right? Like the floor is cover, right? Or, or this door frame here. Just be aware of your weaknesses. Breaking railings can help your vision a lot as well. Uh, control space here. Uh, try and stop cart generally around here-ish if you can so that you can get a guaranteed recontest. If you don't stop cart until here and you lose, that's generally it. You're not going to be able to get a good recontest without being horrible, without feeling terrible. And like I said, you can control the side of the map early on. It's just not always going to be the best. But like I said, this position is really powerful with mobility heroes and short range heroes. And if you want to be cheeky, you can set up flanks around this way as well. Uh, but just try and stop cart around this vicinity. Be aware of this as here, as well as here. Uh, like if you're taking a stopping cart and you're shooting the guy in the cart, they might send like a May or a Reaper underneath this short flank here and shoot your tank and you can't see him. So just keep that one in mind. And I believe you can wall climb up here out. So yeah. Okay. Second defense is 
Generally, this is gonna be your spot of the map because it's closer to your respawn and you have nice cover. So you wanna kinda of take control of the space, stop cart from here, but then you always wanna make sure that you're either A, sending someone to contest the enemy high ground from this angle here, either from this door here or from this hard flank. It's hard to do. Or you can do this here where you actually swing wide and shoot them from this position here. And you can see how that's a problem because their boxes for cover are focused on this, but you see how I can be still be shot over there. So then if I hide here, I can be shot by over there. So this box provides cover, but it's not perfect. So as long as you're not just all stacking, you know, in this little building and shooting on cart here, if you're taking an angle here, maybe you got a soldier or a Hanzo or a, a Torbjorn peeking out from here with turret or something, um, you can actually cause a lot of havoc. Uh, defense is all about trying to set up multiple angles on cart without just panicking and dying on cart. Don't all run onto cart and then give up the high guards for them to take away from you. Try and stop cart with as few people as possible and have everybody else focus on taking the map away. Um, this spawn room is worth knowing as well. You could do a lot of cheeky stuff here, like sneak up on people. Um, I like, like you can definitely assassinate people who are trying to push cart from here. Um, it's not the most relevant room in the history of the world, but it is something worth noting. Um, that's mostly it. That's really mostly it. Big thing is just don't walk out like Havana first. Don't all walk out and try and recontest the choke like this. You know, take an off angle here, take an off angle over there, swing wide here, try and give yourself more vision, more information. Um, and which off angle you take will depend on which hero you are. For example, if I'm playing a Widowmaker, I really probably don't want to be peeking like this. This is too close. I'm going to get my head blown off. I might, as a Widowmaker, grapple across to here, or I might do something cheeky like late peek here. Um, if I'm playing Tracer, I probably will want to flank around behind. For Tracer, I might also be able to do this, which most heroes can't do, right? Which is go through this door frame and wrap up this way. Most heroes don't have that level of mobility or self-sustain, but it's an option, something to consider. Okay, let's keep going with defense here. So like, let's say defense becomes a little bit of a problem. Maybe they cap. You can spawn camp really quite effectively on third point as well because of the amount of cover that this point has and the guarantee of a safe recontest. Uh, most people don't fight in what I call no man's land. And this is no man's land in Havana. I mean, how many times have you guys actually had a serious team fight on this stretch of road? Probably not too often. And so keeping that in mind, you know that when the cart moves from point A to point B, if you don't contest it, it's not the end of the world. You weren't planning on fighting there anyway. Heck, people don't even also necessarily hold on the bridge either. So what that means is you are free, if you want, to take a fight here. So especially if, like, let's say you didn't get a chance to recontest and they cap, hold the doors, mate. Hold the doors. Hold the doors. Again, they have a massive respawn advantage, um, but you can hold the doors. And the funny thing about this is even if you're playing a spam comp, holding the doors isn't bad because unlike first point, you actually have great sniper spots to cover. Like, let's say you got a Zen or a Hanzo. Your Zen can play, like, back here. Your Zen can play here. Your, your Widow can literally play here and still, actually that's not really as good of an angle as I'd like. It's not bad, but you could have your Widow playing like back here, right? You could have a Hanzo, whatever, taking an angle. It's actually still pretty decent to spawn hold, even if you're playing a sniper composition here. And the goal there is like probably not to use a lot of ultimates, just to try and waste as much time as possible, get picks, get trades, stuff them in this choke, make sure Palo doesn't move. You know, obviously be aware of this flank here, be aware that respawns will be coming out of these doors, uh, but you could get really, really nice angles here uh, and just basically spam them out. Um, there's better cover than there used to be. I, I want to say that this turret truck thing is new there's some new cover here i need to i need to like look more at this map in comparison to overwatch one like these barrels are new as well i'm fairly certain uh, so there is a little bit more cover but hey uh you could definitely utilize that to your advantage as well so anyway long story short spawn holding is fine here you can set up different angles set up different flanks and just trying to waste time whenever you're spawn holding you know that the map control isn't perfect because you know Spawn hold, if spawn holding if spawn holding was good for map control people would do it every single map right every single fight um, but it's okay because you're not going to give up that much for it. So let's say you're not spawn holding. You're going to try and hold this corner here. Uh, that's pretty reasonable as well. Uh, the difference between this corner and spawn holding is you actually have a little bit better sightlines for your snipers than you would otherwise. Um, you can spam cart really nastily. Like, again, no man's land, right? From here to here, there's nowhere for the enemy team to push cart that provides cover. So you can really abuse that. You can hold this building as well and control space here. Like, I, I like... Doing, I did was doing this when we were holding this the other day. I was playing May. 
I held this room and I was able to get decent spam on cart, but the other thing I was allowed to do is I also had a pretty good angle on this position here. So if anybody team tried to sneak up and control the side of the map to shoot us, I would just sit there and just icicle down a, a lane and wall them off and, and just basically split them off. So this was really, really good to do. Um, and this can also give something that your flankers can do. Like if you're Trace or somebody, you're like, where on earth do I play? You could play in this side of the map here, right, with a Mega, but there's not a lot of cover here, but this side of the map does provide, especially with the new barrels, does provide a different angle for like Genji's Tracers sombras and things to engage on if you are holding here you can hold here but again the one weakness if you're not a flanker is that if your team backs up you're stuck uh unless you have the mobility or whatever so just something to keep in mind um and the other thing as well is that like if you're tunneled on this they may or may not be able to sneak up behind you and catch you from behind so just be aware of that i don't think there's anything relevant with the spawn room you can technically go out and peek this way as well but that will cover more in the attack so defense that's fine hold the corner um the difference about this corner as well as well as well as well is that widowmaker has a really good angle here so if you do hold this corner your sniper soldier ash hanzo and so on uh, even your ana actually has a really better a much better angle than you would with spawn camping so that's good to keep in mind and if you're holding this corner here like i said you could do cheeky little stuff along this undercurrent here uh, i think this would be used a lot more if it wasn't so exposed if there was a couple of rocks here and there i think this area would be a little more used maybe like a mini health back but it is what it is and then the last spot, which is everyone's very familiar with this, is the Havana third point choke, which is a little bit less harsh than it used to be. I believe it's a little bit wider. If it's not, it's certainly easier to get in. Um, so for defense, it's going to be about still making this as horrendous as you possibly can. Controlling high ground here is just inarguably the most important thing that you can do because if it's you're not controlling it, the enemies will take it away from you and use it against you. So make sure that you're controlling this high ground with supports, with DPS. Um, it's not just about shoot using this to shoot down on the choke either. It's about utilizing this angle to shoot behind the choke onto the back line. So make sure that you're utilizing this whenever you can. Hold the choke. Uh, this mini room is pretty good. Uh, but I don't recommend it for defenders because you, your supports can't see you so you can even just hold this here as a tank or this here as a tank It's generally gonna be one of the other two options. I don't really love this high ground This is okay, but it really limits your LOS and then if you get poked out you end up going behind a wall So I actually think this high ground is actually really really bad um, I don't love it. I don't love it You could definitely use this like if you're a sniper over here, but I don't I don't really love this uh, Two things to be aware of three things really to be aware of one, we want opponents to choke, obviously, but one is high ground. Be aware that attackers will try to take this away from you. Two is this choke here. You, this, somebody might take an angle in your tank from here, or somebody might actually hard flank and sneak up onto your back line from here. And the third one, which everyone should know by now, but just in case, is this number here. Not only can you, if you have mobility, like ice wall, wild climb, whatever, can the attackers immediately get in this room, but they can also hard flank and there's a mega out here as well and access your back lane from here so cheeky but remember whenever there's a nasty choke the attackers are going to be forced to do aggressive things so you need to keep that one in mind don't lose scouting of these areas um i think mean, it depends on their comp right if they're on widowmaker probably not likely that you're worried about this spot of the map but you're definitely worried about this one right if they're on tracer probably not worried about a tracer blinking up here but you are worried about tracer going over through here or sneaking around behind here right so just something to keep in mind um oh my cat let's still look out the window hi other thing to keep in mind uh for defenders is that same rules apply when you're trying to recontest i just do not recommend running all out at once if you can get a separate split angle here split attention capitalize off of everybody focusing on one choke it's going to help you out a lot okay so for attackers last little bit here for attackers be aware of the spawn camp possibilities set up your backline in safe positions these boxes are phenomenal they're so good so many nice quality of life changes for this point as bad as this map is this point has gotten a, a little bit better which is really nice um yeah so just utilize this cover as much as you can try and focus on pushing cart and not taking too many aggressive angles this angle is really good for supports and dps there's nice cover here the barrels you've got this corner here try and leverage this and whenever you can as you're pushing cart you can either do one of two things you can either utilize this here which often will have free silence in the back line so for dps zinyadas on is um, you know even uh, uh batiste right a little bit of spam damage from here is pretty helpful but 
more often than not, you're going to be trying to clear out and leverage this side of the map as well, uh, along as the cart moves. So try and get control of this. And then the nice thing here is that theoretically you can get in control of this high ground a lot easier for attackers and keep the payload in front of you. So this is something that's worth noting as well, as well as this little peak here. Continuing here, you go through the spawn door, you go out through here, you have another cheeky sightline that you can take, especially if you're a longer range hero. Also staging for flankers onto getting to backline, you can sneak around behind this way much easier. Um, and also if you're a flanker as well, this is a pretty cool thing where you can like wall climb, you walk up here, sneak up as Genji, wall climb up and instant access to backline. If they scout you, you're screwed, uh, but worth noting here. Um, wrecking balls, right? Wrecking balls, we wanna try and sneak around behind and set up from this way. Uh, maybe we grapple up you know, and slam from here, but we wanna be sneaky. So underneath and this building pretty good. And then once we get to the choke, well, once we get to the choke, well, it's really just the defense, but flip side. Like we know this is really bad. We know this is really hard. So we have to consider, uh, assuming that the ults are even, right? If we have a lot of ultimates, we can. We don't have to do anything crazy. We just blow our ults, right? But if you guys are like in a relatively neutral fight, you do need to try and take a couple of risks and take, but take risks that complement your composition, right? So if I'm playing Genji, I'm playing for this, right? I'm playing to harass and, and neglect. And maybe I'll sneak around behind here and, and try and harass and go for assassinations, right? If I'm playing Tracer, I'm using this flank over here, or I'm using this flank to get to the background to the high ground, right? Uh, one thing I did with May is I actually walled up through here and I snuck through here and I took an aggressive offing and I was poking through here. And just being a general nuisance, trying to bait them to push me so that I'd create space for my team. And if they push me, I can wall myself in, I can grab the mini health back, then I can ice block, I'm just wasting time. But I'm trying to take aggressive angles or aggressive positions depending on the DPS or supports that you're playing that complement your team. If you're playing dive here, right? Dive, you don't just sit there and shoot the choke. You go one, three, two, one, jump high ground. Have your Genji wall climb, your Winston jumps, your Lucio wall rides, and try and get out and clear this angle like that. Um, you do not want to just simply brute force through choke over and over and over again while your backline is getting shredded by all the different angles that they can take on you. So try and think about your composition as a tank, DPS, and support. What are some strengths that I can leverage, uh, even just by myself when my team is fighting, that I can help create a little bit of a crossfire, a little bit of distraction? Because when the positions, the reason why I do that, when the positions are super strong for defense, you have to try and disrupt or distract those positions from just shooting what they want to shoot. If they have to, for example, if I'm Genji, even if I don't kill the Widowmaker, if I can prevent the Widowmaker from peeking my backline here, instead have her shooter at me, it's a much more even fight, right? And I want to try and even things up and cause a little bit of chaos because chaos is your friend when the enemy has a massive advantage. Last thing with attackers as well is don't only focus on the one spawn door. As I'm coaching defenders to take re uh, flanks, you need to be aware that good defenders will take those flanks. Um, also, I think too many people end up getting stuck on cart as well. The best thing you can do for attackers in recontest situations is get one person on cart, cart preferably your tank, and everybody else is taking angles. Everybody's keeping their distance and spamming. We can push and get kills, but don't all end up on cart and the doomfist walks out or bash and walks out and you just all instantly die um so yeah that's my havana map guide split recon test control off angles control sightlines use cover use the new cover the map is so much better to play around with because there's so much more cover and if you're not leveraging that yes it is absolutely more of a sniper favored map but there because of the cover and because of some of the high grounds that are available there are brawl and dive options so if you play a reaper if you play a reinhardt if you play lucio if you play brig you can make this map work you just need to be patient and figure out some of the details um so yeah do you guys have any questions it's definitely a lot better than it used to be. They do a good job adding nuance to the map, like more opening up, like closing up some of these sightlines that made it so dominating to play against. Where do you position as support on first point? Sure. So we talked a little bit about this, but we'll quickly rehash it. So support on first point, high ground is great unless they're on snipers. And then even if they're on, not on snipers, but the, let's say the bot is over here, and your tanks over here, unless you're going for like a flank nade, probably need to rotate back. If they are on snipers, the carts aggressed forward, then this building is really good for uh, supports to play. This staircase is really good for supports to play. And then if the carts really advanced, honestly, just mega health back is fine. Like this is pretty good cover. You can do good stuff from here. You have a good angle for flank stuff or good pressure on the defense. So it's basically here, here, although I'm, I'm a little exposed to flanks from here, and here, and then in early on, high ground is fine, unless they're on snipers. If they're on snipers, you can just simply play the pillar here. Uh, this is okay, but it does mean that you have to rotate out in the open 
at some point, so it's a little bit risky.